Last time on World War K3, a convoy carrying humanitarian aid supplies was attacked by Mechjib forces, who then took one of the brave Kerbals piloting the convoy hostage. The Kerbals retaliated by using an airstrike. Unfortunately, though, the tanks were unaffected. Next, the Kerbals used an A-10 Warthog to try and take out the tanks using bombs and missiles. But the tank survived. In the end, our Kerbal rammed the enemy tanks in an attempt to destroy them and save his friend. However, they were unaffected, and now they have two captives and are threatening to kill them. Hello! So we're back in World War K, KSP, and we have to kill those tanks, which are bloody indestructible at this stage. Uh, we've we've shot at them with uh, you know the the is it 30 millimeter gun on the Warthog. We've Hellfire missiles them. Admittedly, the Hellfire is the lowest uh, yield of any of those missiles, and uh, we've even used bombs. And the bombs uh, they've been landing very close, although admittedly maybe not directly on top of the target. We can't really check that, but uh, I suspect they were just landing very close. So what I'm going for here is we're actually going to go for a cruise missile submarine. So we're going to be able to get close, fire off a load of missiles, a lot of missiles, a lot of high yield missiles, and you know hopefully they won't hear us coming because you know stealthy submarine. Now the idea here is, you know, mech forces are threatening to kill them if we go and, you know, attack them, whatever. So we want to be able to save our Kerbals who are there without really, you know, giving the game away. So we don't get a very large window to attack, we don't want to be doing repeated passes in a plane, we don't want to appear on radar, we want to just be able to get near the shore and go. And, you know, thankfully they are about only one and a half kilometers from the shore. So here we're using a, a big uh, propeller engine because my idea is I want to make it look a bit like a submarine. And, you know, submarines tend to use propellers because, well, they do. Also, because, you know, water is fairly efficient to use a propeller, and there's no other real way at the moment of really doing it other than maybe something like an impeller or something, which is still a version of a propeller. Effectively, for me, a propeller is just you spin a blade and it pushes the water. Um, so, most submarines, of course, these days tend to be nuclear, uh, mainly because, you know, propeller can be done with electricity, and frankly, if you don't ever need to refuel, well, ever, I say ever, you don't need to refuel for a very long period of time um, compared to pretty much any other fuel substance. That's perfect for a submarine that needs to be, you know, long range. It needs to be quiet and thus never surfaces, or at least not surface as much as possible. This is pretty much exactly the kind of thing. But unfortunately, I don't have a nuclear reactor. I have no mods for a nuclear reactor. Now, of course, there are mods in KSP for a nuclear reactor, but I don't want to add extra mods and make the thing a bit unstable. So what we're going to go for here is we're using the Hooligan Map Labs mod, which is not been updated for about a year, so we'll see, um, to try and adjust, you know, ascent and descent, and then we'll fill it up with BD Armoury uh, Maverick missiles. The Maverick missiles are actually air-to-ground missiles. A lot of the missiles in BD Armoury are actually air-to-ground missiles or air-to-air -air missiles. I don't think there's any ground-to-ground -ground missiles or even sea-to-ground or specifically subsurface submarine-launched missiles. Uh, I don't think there are any of those. But hopefully I'm hoping the missile can transition through the water. That kind of came apart very quickly. I also couldn't bring up the uh, escape menu to go back to uh, the launch, uh, the uh, split tank hangar, so very odd. Good. Now, the one thing I was wondering is if that engine's going to clip the Hooligan Lab uh, bits at the edge. It's not. So, I think, you know, now's a good time to probably test if this will hold together in the water. Now, we're going to use um, Hyper Edit to get us into the water. It doesn't make sense that we'd have to roll the submarine to the edge of the water or whatever. So, we're going to use Hyper Edit just to land in there, and I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer to the shore because I have no idea how quickly we're going to plummet through the water before I can adjust the ballast. I'll save it to KSC water. So I'm not going to have the propeller turning too hard as it hits the water. I don't know what that'll do to it, but I do want it moving because actually when it's static, it's treated as a static part and the entire thing can break or cause forces. If it's moving, then that's slightly different. It's an animated part and it may... it exploded and disappeared. Okay. And I also can't seem to bring up the UI for Hooligan Labs. Uh, that makes it very difficult for me to ascend and descend. It's not on that list. Yeah, maybe we can't use Hooligan Labs. So I came up with a different solution. Hooligan Labs is completely broken. Actually, one of the draw calls uh, got updated in, I think, point ninety, and it, the way it's drawing is instead of drawing at something, at some stage it's drawing a different stage, it's using a different thing, which means that you can't bring up the UI at all for Hooligan Labs uh, submarine mod parts, and actually it breaks parts of the game. Like, I couldn't bring up the escape menu, that was due to Hooligan Labs. So I've got a new idea. Now, we're actually using the better buoyancy mod. Oh, God, firing missile instant explodes up our craft. I'll have to look into that. So try again. Um, the idea here is that better buoyancy treats water a little bit differently. Better buoyancy, you can actually survive, uh, you know, landing planes on water, doing water ditching and so on. And water's a bit more realistic. However, 
I came with this novel solution that we could actually push ourselves under the water with jet engines. I mean, it's very fuel, you know, guzzling. It's it's not particularly efficient. And we need a lot of engines. We can just about get underwater like that. And we're only, like, just below the surface. But it should do. And if we go forwards, we're getting about 8 meters per second. That's about, what, like, 70 miles an hour or something? Off the top of my head. It's not particularly fast. I mean, um, talking about normal submarines these days, you know, estimate to have top speeds of a fair bit faster than that. Okay, um... The missiles can't exit the water. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting them to be able to pass through the water. Better buoyancy obviously changes that. So it looks like we'll be able to launch them under the water. Most submarines do uh, these days. I think, you know, yeah, they're not passing through the water. So if we launch from the surface, yeah, we can. Okay. Submarines haven't done this since about the early 60s. Uh, tends to be, you know, you want your sub to be able to launch from under the water. These days, that seems to be the case. And now I've launched all my missiles. We can actually go a fair distance under the water. I don't know if this is based on the weight or if it's based on the number of parts as it is in normal KSC buoyancy. But we are now very far under the water and sinking fairly fast. Uh, oh dear. And uh, now we're going backwards. Um, I'm ready to go up. Uh, yeah. Let's decrease the throttle and... Oh, we... Yeah, we're not exactly particularly like level in our buoyancy but you know we got to the surface so that's a that's a bonus let's try this again really <laughs> uh really odd but you know at least we can sink really low to escape getting there might be a bit more difficult and what wait all our engines are disappearing what the hell um well i'm glad we tested it Right, so here is the finished product. I decided that, you know, 70 miles an hour wasn't particularly fast. I mean, you're talking about normal submarines these days. We're talking, you know, estimated top speed is about 33 knots, which I think is about 28 miles an hour or something. Uh, rough head figures there. Uh, so I decided that, you know, that fast wasn't particularly great, especially since it would take a long time to get there. And while normal submarines these days can afford to take weeks to get the target, I don't want to be spending weeks having KSP loaded going towards the target. Especially given KSP's propensity to crash and have a memory leak when you're close to the ground. So we're going to try and force ourselves underwater. And then using the throttle control mod, I'm going to be able to use my directional throttle on the throttle control mod. I must admit, I'm loving the throttle control mod right now. I'm using it so much. So, hopefully, we should be able to get moving. Now, I'm using ridiculously large engines for our sideways uh, momentum. Uh, using, you know, uh, what's it called? Tweak scale to get these engines, you know, twice as large as they should be. And that's in terms of, you know, sideways or radius or whatever. That area is, you know, that's effectively four times because the area is a square. So we're going to get some pretty decent thrust exits. Now, of course, we are under the water and we are using jet engines the water. But we should be able to get some reasonable speed going is my hope. And it's not really pointing at the heading I gave it, but... There we go. It's, it's twisting. It's twisting. There's definitely some oddness going on there. Yeah, we're getting some serious speed. I think we're getting about, what, like 50 miles an hour? Maybe not. Maybe about that? Yeah, it must be about 50 miles an hour. Maybe 60? That's that's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. Let's walk to the tide, because you don't want to watch all this. So, unfortunately, we actually started running out of fuel halfway, and I had to send a refueling plane, which I had to specially build. And we're not going to go through the building process of that. Uh, this was actually built on stream, actually. Uh... A load of people got, saw me try and build this and fly it. It's just a giant seaplane that can refuel our sub. Now, maybe not the most efficient, and especially does disrupt the stealth a little bit. But it should be okay. Now, one problem I did find is that, if you see here, we're going to connect a pipe to our submarine, transfer fuel across, and then we should be good to go. The problem I found is that, without a ladder, Kerbal sink in the water and never come back. That's a problem. So, using the ladder, we managed to get across, place that. Uh, it does mean we need them fairly close to this, but it's working fairly well. I do think that, you know, the, the Kerbal Attachment System's ability to just pump fuel across is pretty damn awesome. So, I could use comparisons between this sub, by the way, and a ballistic missile sub, but actually it's probably a lot closer to a cruise missile sub, and they are fairly different. Cruise missiles are often fired from pretty much any thing you can convert on a submarine. Often it's ballistic missile subs that have been converted or a multi-role as opposed to being dedicated cruise missile subs. 
and the ones that are dedicated to missile subs tend to have been converted from normal ballistic missile subs. The Americans did that to some of the Ohio class because it counted against the arms reduction for military uh, uh, frontline weapons. Alright, so let's move the sub away and let's try taking off of the, uh, the, the refueling seaplane. Okay, let's get the uh, the vertical engines. Ooh. Yeah, it's meant to do that. Don't worry about that. And then... Up, up and away! It's like a whale jumping majestically out of the water. Uh, except the front ones are stuck. They're not responding to... Okay, I have to manually turn them off. Hmm. Right, so we approach the uh, the shore in the, the dead of darkness. The problem is I kind of... Well, like we could launch in the dead of darkness, but you wouldn't be able to see anything. I think we'll probably lay up... Get ready, and as soon as dawn starts, we'll launch our missiles. You know, maybe catch Mechjeb by surprise. They don't sleep, they're robots, so maybe that won't work. But anyway, maybe maybe the new sun will be blinding their senses or something, I don't know. Right, so dawn has started. It's time to launch our attack, so gently down on the throttle, up to the surface. Now, we are packing Maverick air-to-ground missiles, and unfortunately they're air-to-ground missiles, so... We have to come up with a fairly unique solution, because the problem with these is you can't fire them vertically like you would often fire a lot of uh, cruise missiles. Um, we have to come up with a clever way of doing this. So let's open the bay doors and bring up Inferno Robotics. There's a lot of data on screen, I apologize for that, but we kind of need a lot of it. There we go. We're packing a lot of missiles. We are packing, what, like 36? No, 24. 24 missiles. Still, 24 missiles is a lot. Maybe not as much as most... Uh, Christmas subs these days would carry like, you know, five times that. But still, in KSP, that's a lot of missiles. So, we've come up with this really sort of special solution where we raise them and then we point them forwards. And this should allow them to lock. Now, the problem with the Maverick missiles in BD Armory is that you need to have them roughly pointing at target for them to get a lock. You can't launch them vertically. So, give a bit more tilt to them maybe and they should get a lock. I think it's something like a, about a 40 degree cone around the nose that they can get a lock on. Now, if we point them too far over, by the way, they will clip each other and explode. So that should be enough. I've got to bear in mind there is a hill in front as well. So let's target one and fire off our first set of four. Ready? Arm them. Switch to them and fire. So I'm setting two pairs of two. So I want to be able to just destroy them instantly. I want to be able to do lots of damage. And let's watch them come in over the, uh, over the hill. Hopefully we've got enough clearance as well. It does look like they've got the target. They're not not going upwards too much. They're actually starting to curve over. Mech Jeb forces are engaging with their uh, the pinnacle mounted guns. I guess it's the value about being a Mech Jeb that you can you know, tie all your guns into that. But oh, it looks like they. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, those things are tough, but you know, four Maverick missiles is enough. So let's fire off our next set. Uh, I'm going to fire both of them at once. So that's another eight missiles in the air, four for each target. I'm using Targetron, by the way, to get the, the targets up. It's a little bit dodgy on this install, but should be okay. Oh, they're shooting down missiles. They've got at least two or three. Three, four. Oh, are we going to get... Yes. Oh, did it survive? No, it's not on the Targetron. It must have killed it, but its shell is intact. Let's just engage the last one, then. That's for uh, a bunch of missiles. They did manage to shoot down four missiles. I'm fairly impressed for a little tank gun. Well, it's not a little gun. It's actually like a 50 cal. Or is it 20 millimeter, that one? I can't remember. So, firing off another six missiles, I think that is. Hopefully, should be enough to kill off the last tank. Come on. Yeah. So he overheated his gun. One, two, three. There we go. Yeah, that's completely gone. Oh, God, it's exploding in midair. And wow, that one there is exploding from clipping. Interesting. Um, I'm really liking how this... Wow, it just keeps exploding. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I think we need to make sure that, that tank is dead. I mean, it's got nothing inside it, but you know, just in case. Just in case. Oh, the destruction of beautiful. Oh, the chassis, there it is. 
It's still intact. These chassis are so tough. So incredibly tough. But we managed to take out all the mech jab forces. We've actually got some missiles left. Um, oh, let's just, let's just fold this back up. What? I did not fire that. Um, it looks like Inferno Robotics accidentally activates the missiles. I have no idea why or how. Yeah, I didn't activate that one either. Um, maybe I should just deliberately activate these missiles so that, you know, it doesn't fire them in when the bay doors are closed because that would be bad. But that's complete victory for us. We managed to... Let's just hope the missiles don't land on anyone. Um, we managed to take out all the mech forces. Lost none of the Kerbals, I think. If we go check that, we we had a complete success. Which is our first success in this entire series so far. I wish that wasn't such a just quite close, remarkable thing. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like, remember to like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Yes! So, back to the uh, the ridiculous whale of a seaplane refueling tanker. Um, because its action groups just aren't working, action groups have stopped working entirely, I'm having some real trouble flying it. This thing requires three different sets of engines to really take off and stuff. Landing is a little bit easier, but I'm very concerned considering this thing weighs a lot. It's probably a little bit back heavy at the moment from draining fuel. Um, this is going to be tough. It's not got a great wheelbase because the wheels are actually splayed out to the side, so they're actually a little bit less good at taking force. And it doesn't fly very well, especially at low speeds, it tends to do odd things. So I'm actually using the vertical engines here, which I wouldn't normally have to do to try and just alleviate our descent. And you can actually see that our trajectory marker is indicating we're going to hit just prior to the launch pad, not the launch pad, the runway. I'm not... come on. Up a bit, up a bit. Oh, I think we might make it. Now, the issue here is just being short on the runway. Now, normally, I'm really long on the runway, and I tend to have to try and put down too too fast. I'm like, oh, crap, I'm going to miss it. Here, we're very risky. Uh, I think we're just going to come in over the runway. Okay. I'm very concerned if we land this thing on solid ground. I mean, landing on water is tough. But... And gently, gently, looking at our vertical speed, it's pretty high. Yes, yes, yeah, don't tip back, don't tip back. No, 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 you might notice that I was actually flying there with the air brakes on the back open to try and get some reasonable pitch for a good deal of that. Wow. Ah. Uh, complete success on all fronts. That's... novel. <laughs>